Welcome, graduating class of 2011. This is what I heard on my very first day of university. <laughs> and as I'm sure you know, it's not 2011 or even 2012. It's 2013, and I'm still here. And this is why I'm here today. I'm here to share with you how to complete your degree in seven years. Now, this could be five, six, or even eight years, but I chose seven because in the end, that is how long it's gonna take me to complete my engineering degree, and because in the Harry Potter world, that is how long it takes to graduate from Hogwarts. <laughs> so, by April 2014, I will officially consider myself a wizard. <laughs> Now, you're probably thinking, what on earth is this girl talking about? Why should I even listen to what she has to say? Can't I complete my bachelor's and master's in seven years? And yes, you can do that. And if you do, that's totally fine. I want to be clear that this talk comes with no judgment. There is no right answer or model to graduating from university. Some people know exactly what they want to do and graduate in four years. I also want to point out that Going to school for seven years is not an option financially for everyone, as university tuition is expensive. So I want to acknowledge this. I'm not going to stand here and tell all of you that this is the path you have to take through university. But this is the path that I'm taking, and I just want to share with you that if you take some extra time to complete your degree, you'll have the chance to gain skills and experiences in addition to figuring out what really makes you happy. Now, in the past, I have heard comments from people like, okay, you're in second year, so that means you're gonna graduate in two years, right? I thought you started third year three years ago. <laughs> it takes seven years to get an engineering degree. And my all-time favorite, uh, so what are you still doing here? <laughs> I want to point out that I don't think any of these people were intentionally trying to make me feel bad, there is just this societal expectation that exists. You graduate from high school, go to some type of post-secondary institution, and if you choose university, you'll be done in four years. I want to challenge this status quo, and I'm going to do this by sharing with you three pieces of advice of how to complete your degree in seven years and what you can gain from it. The first piece of advice that I want to share is change your mind. If you decide one, two, three, even four years into your degree that you actually don't want to study what you're studying, then change your mind. Just do it, and you're allowed to do it. That is what happened to me. I was studying physics at the University of Northern British Columbia in Prince George, which is where I'm from. In grade 12, I had received a Fulbright scholarship to UNBC, so I decided that I would stay at home and study at the local university. I mean, how much better could it get? I was attending one of the newest and most beautiful universities in Canada. I had free tuition, free rent, and free food because I was living at home. I had it made. However, two years into my degree, <laughs> two years into my degree, I realized that I wasn't enjoying myself because I didn't enjoy what I was studying. I found physics was too theoretical for me and I was daydreaming in class and felt very unmotivated to complete my assignment. So I decided that I would change my mind and study something else, something more applied, like engineering, which is what I would enjoy. A great deal of my, a great deal of my time during first semester of second year was spent looking at engineering programs online at other universities. After doing some research, I decided that I wanted to apply for the materials engineering program at UBC. This decision was not easy for me to make. I was very stressed and had anxiety because of it. Back then, five years ago, I wasn't the type of person to do unexpected things. I had a plan for my university degree, and deviating from that plan scared the crap out of me. In my mind, I had equated success in university to graduating in four years. I thought that if you took longer than four years to finish your degree, that meant that you weren't smart enough if you weren't following a system that was set up for you. 
In addition, I had a full ride scholarship to UNBC. Transferring universities meant that I had to leave behind a free bachelor's degree. This was an extremely hard decision for me to make, as the university is expensive. But I knew that if I was to stay because of money, then I wasn't making a decision for the right reason. So it took me a couple months to come to terms with the fact that I wasn't happy and I had to change something. In the end, I applied to the materials engineering program at UBC, got accepted, left my full ride scholarship and free food and free rent, and moved down to Vancouver. So if you realize at some point during your post-secondary education that you're not enjoying what you're learning, then change your mind. Go online and apply for that different program. And if you realize that your second choice wasn't right either, then change your mind again. Find something that you truly enjoy learning about. The second piece of advice I want to share is join something. Find something that you're passionate about or that you think you might be passionate about and sign up. Being part of a club, sports team, or student society will give you so many opportunities to meet inspiring people and gain skills that you otherwise wouldn't have the chance to. And who knows? Maybe you'll find something that you're really passionate about and your involvement will increase and you extend your degree. I was supposed to graduate last year as it was my last and final year of materials engineering. However, four years ago, I joined this organization at UBC called Engineers Without Borders. I had initially joined Engineers Without Borders because I wanted to get involved in a club at school. And I thought, perfect, I'm in engineering. I should join EWAB because that way I can use my technical knowledge to make a difference in the world. After being involved for a couple months though, I realized that this was not what EWAB was about and that's what made me stay and get more involved over the years. Contrary to what people probably think, EWAB isn't all engineers and we don't build wells or build bridges. What we do do is go into these communities where there are broken wells and broken bridges and instead of fixing them, we ask what allowed them to break in the first place. We try to address the root causes of these problems and work with people in these communities to build capacity and skills so that they can tackle the challenges that prevent them from reaching their full potential. After being involved in Engineers Without Borders for a year, my perceptions of poverty, international development, and the role that an engineer can play were shattered. And this is what made me fall in love with the organization and the people part of it as well. And ultimately, why I decided I wanted to run for president of the student chapter last year. Initially though, I didn't want to be president because I thought there is no way I can be president of a student club and complete my fourth year of engineering. I wouldn't have any time at all. I told myself in the beginning that I shouldn't do this because I needed to graduate. But after thinking about it for some more time, I realized that this was something I was really passionate about and I wanted to do this. So I just decided that I would split my fourth year into two years. And doing that allowed me to be part of this amazing group of people and gain skills that I otherwise wouldn't have the chance to do. For me, being part of Engineering Without Borders was my avenue to learning outside the classroom. And most of the things that I have learned, I have not been able to get from courses. So what I'm trying to share is that if you join something and possibly extend your degree, you'll have the chance to gain many different skills and experiences and meet some inspiring people. The third and final piece of advice I want to share is own your degree. Now, this is a bit abstract compared to the other two points, but what I mean by this is that you can shape your university experience however you want. I believe that life is about making choices and you are in control of the choices you make. And most of the time, these choices are going to be hard to make. So even though you can shape your degree however you want, you have to work hard at it. So figure out what you would want to incorporate into your degree and make that happen for yourself. What would make your university journey worthwhile? During your university years, you have this amazing community and so many opportunities at your fingertips. But once you graduate, it won't be as easy to access and use this community. It's not all about courses and grades. 
So take some time to figure out what you would want to incorporate into your degree to make it the best experience possible. So what does this have to do with extending your degree? Well, in the midst of realizing that you own your degree, you may decide you want to study abroad, apply for a job, run a student conference, go traveling, even if it means graduating later. Now you might be a little confused as to where this falls onto my university timeline, but basically it influences almost every decision I've made over the past few years. In particular, applying for engineering co-op and when I have dropped some courses. In my first year at UBC, which was my third year of university, I decided I wanted to apply for the engineering co-op program. Being in co-op allowed me to gain technical work experience in my field, but my co-op work terms added a year to my degree. I was really unsure about applying for the program when I first got to UBC because I just transferred to university, so I'd be adding on another year right away. But in the big picture, extending your degree does not set you back. I have also, in the past, dropped some courses, which are represented by the purple stars. <laughs> um, I did this when I was president of EWB, and I also did this when I realized that taking seven courses is not actually conducive to learning. But it can be stressful for students to drop classes, especially when they're given standard timetables, because they don't want to deviate from what is expected of them. But it's acceptable to drop a class. My point is, is that some of the choices you may make will end up extending your degree, but who cares? From being involved in all the things and all the choices that I've made, I've had the unbelievable opportunity to gain transferable skills, have a better learning environment, and learn some things about myself I otherwise wouldn't have the chance to. So let's remember the three points of how to complete your degree in seven years and become a wizard. And it's change your mind, join something, and own your degree. I also want to share with you all the things that I've gained over the past six and a half years. So I thought I would try something new and use a word cloud, which is a visual representation for text data. Basically, the more a word is used in a talk or a story or an essay, the bigger it shows up in the word cloud. Um, I thought this would be a pretty modern and cool and catchy way of communicating to all of you all the things I've gained over the years, skills, experiences, finding your passion, happiness, you know, words like that. Um, so I went online uh, to create this word cloud, and this is what came out. <laughs> Not very sexy or exciting in my opinion. <laughs> As you can see, the three biggest words are degree, university, and years. Uh, I mean, that's not too surprising as it's part of the context of what I'm sharing. The next three biggest words are want, people, and something. People want something. <laughs> now, I might be going out on a limb here, but bear with me. This statement strikes me because what I take from it is that students want something from their university degree, but what each student wants is different, which is why, which is why it's okay if you do or do not follow the four-year path. I want something from my university degree. I want to gain skills that are actually valuable. I want to find out what kind of job I'm best suited for. I want to have fun. I want to study something that I'm interested in. People want something. I didn't plan on doing my bachelor's for seven years. It just happened that way. And honestly, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to graduate from university. Four, five, six, seven years. What is that something that you want? I'm sure if you take the time to figure this out, not only will you become a wizard and have a bit of extra magic in your life, but you will enjoy completing your degree a great deal more. Thank you. <laughs>